When I was a little boy, my first memory was a flying dream. In my dream, I flew and I also fell. And I, I always wondered as I got older if I was, you know, if it was some premonition of me falling to my death. In the heart of Yosemite National Park, where nature's grandeur meets the human spirit's unyielding determination, one man dared to defy gravity and rewrite the rules of adventure. Who was Dean Potter, a modern-day daredevil or a visionary on the brink of discovery? Was he seeking the thrill of the moment, or was there something more profound driving him? Join us on an extraordinary journey into the heart of Yosemite National Park, as we unravel the enigmatic tale of Dean Potter, a man who defied gravity, challenged fate, and left an indelible mark on the world of adventure. Things like the physical acts, it's, it's to um, enter heightened states through, through um, those activities. And I find when I risk my life, or when there's a lot on the line, that I have um, heightened concentration, heightened emotions, heightened senses, and that's the reason I'm doing all of, all of these things. Dean Potter, an American mountaineer base jumper and highliner, epitomized the art of living on the edge. Born on April 14, 1972, in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, his climbing journey began in 1988, leaving an enduring impact on American climbing by the decade's end. Through audacious feats and solo sense, he gained global recognition. Potter's fame, stemmed from pioneering perilous routes and stunts that redefined the possibilities of free solo climbing. His achievements made him an iconic figure in extreme sports. On May 16, 2015, Potter and his partner, Graham Hunt, embarked on a daring base jumping adventure from Taft Point, an epic location perched 3,000 feet above a lush valley. Three, two, one, see ya. This is Dean Potter base jumping in a wingsuit last year, his dog Whisper strapped on his back. On Saturday, Potter and fellow flyer Graham Hunt jumped off Taft Point in Yosemite National Park. Jen Rapp, Potter's devoted partner, stood a mere 20 feet away, diligently capturing the unfolding moment with her camera. And I don't think about it so much as dealing with watching my loved ones risk their lives. I think of it in a more positive way of getting to watch my loved ones achieve their dreams and do exactly what they want to do. Against the backdrop of the majestic El Capitan, bathed in the golden hues of the setting sun, the couple's beloved dog, Whisper, added an intriguing dimension to the scene. Yosemite National Park strictly forbids base jumping due to its inherent dangers, a fact well known to Hunt and Potter. Yet, driven by their quest for the ultimate adrenaline rush, they challenged not only the law, but also fate itself. Yosemite, renowned among base jumpers for its towering cliffs and breathtaking vistas, was a familiar playground for the daring duo. Taft Point was no stranger to their exploits, despite the deterrent of offense meant to discourage jumping. Their prior adventures saw them executing a daring 100-meter leap towards the western expanse, then veering towards the valley's heart, where a sloping ridge known as Lost Brother beckoned. The geological term sloping rib or ridge describes an elongated crest descending from a mountain peak. This part of the mountain features the steepest slope and is typically composed of more resilient rock and erosion-resistant material. A balanced life and to be able to do the things I love, but also to be able to have a family and friends around and in a community. And, um, you know, one would be empty without the other. So, so it's definitely not like to go bigger and better and, and stuff like that, or to be even like the more top dog or anything. Um, Interestingly, this specific topographical feature remains absent from visitor maps. Nested within this ridge lay a V-shaped notch that both Hunt and Potter intended to traverse before their descent into the valley. However, as events unfolded, destiny had different plans for them. As the evening of May 16 descended, both men swiftly donned their jumpsuits, not bothering to await the full onset of dusk. A gentle breeze caressed them, 
its presence insufficient to sow any seeds of doubt regarding their mission. Potter made his leap from the mountain, and Hunt closely trailed him like an ever-present shadow. Jen Rapp managed to snap a few photographs of the daring duo just before they gracefully soared away, their wings spread wide. Hunt was clad in a specialized suit engineered for speed, while Potter had earned renown for his extended flights, choosing to remain airborne for extended duration. Notably, Potter had recently been in Canada, collaborating on the development of a suit designed to facilitate landing on glacier ice surfaces without the need for a parachute. Through her camera's lens, Rapp observed Hunt heading toward the notch, which was surprising given that Hunt's altitude seemed insufficient for a successful base jump through the notch. If I had thought that it won't ever happen to me, I won't, you know, because I've watched it happen and I've had my mentor just, just die base jumping. And, um, so, I mean, that reality is there for sure, but then there's the cliche of, well, yeah, you can die driving your car, and that's fully true, man. So, I mean, I have to believe that, um, that we don't have to die doing this, you know? I honestly feel like I can be a 75-year-old man and still go for a hike and fly. Hunt initially veered left, as though intending to circumvent the ridge, but swiftly corrected course to the right. Meanwhile, Potter continued on his trajectory towards the notch, and the two vanished into the mountain's aperture. Shortly after, Rapp heard a faint tapping sound, and in an attempt to comfort herself, she attributed it to the familiar sound of a parachute unfurling, however. Her solace was short-lived as she soon discerned a more muted, weightier noise. In that moment, the nature of the second sound eluded her. Standing at the cliff's edge, Rapp anxiously scanned below for any sign of her friends but found none. She reviewed her photos, desperately seeking clues, yet the two-dimensional frames offered little insight. In her images, both Hunt and Potter had vanished from view. Two daredevils were killed over the weekend attempting a stunt while base jumping, which is fly, skydiving off a fixed object. This time it was a cliff in Yosemite National Park, but they collided with a rocky outcrop on the way down. Ben Tracy tells us one of the men was a legend among thrill seekers. Rebecca Haney, Hunt's girlfriend, had been out hiking when Hunt informed her of his and Potter's intention to leap from Taft Point. She abandoned her hike and hastily drove to the valley, anticipating further communication from him. However, as time passed and her phone remained devoid of messages, the encroaching darkness spurred her into action. Growing increasingly anxious and unable to locate Hunt and Potter, Haney retraced her steps hurriedly returning along the trail and embarking on a 13-mile drive to the valley. At El Capitan Meadow, she found no one. Proceeding to their shared residence in Yosemite West, she still found no sign of them, despite their earlier work on a potential new home site, now eerily vacant. Alone in the dimly lit house, Rapp grappled with overwhelming anxiety. She meticulously examined the photographs, envisioning countless scenarios. Had they met with an accident, sustained injuries or encountered legal trouble. Her heart oscillated between the hope of their return and the dread of a grave misfortune. By 9.30 a.m., Haney had returned alone in her vehicle, scouring the village bar for any trace of Potter and Hunt among the climbers, but finding none. At 10.30 a.m., a decision was made to seek help from Mike Gaudier, Yosemite's chief of staff. See, now we're gonna go with my friend Pablo who's behind the lens right now. We're gonna go look where the red's gonna be positioned for the... This is our camp. This is base camp, you know, like Hollywood style, big hotel room, $300 a night. Just piles and piles of gear, trying to keep everything... Um... Park rangers confirmed the absence of base jumpers in the area leading to the organization of a late-night search operation in collaboration with Yosemite Search and Rescue. While there was hope that Dean Potter had only sustained injuries, a foreboding outcome loomed. Overwhelmed by anxiety and unable to endure the agonizing wait, Rapp armed herself with binoculars and descended to the canyon's base. She peered into the abyss, screaming but received no response. With the break of dawn, 
the rescue team remained without answers. A helicopter spotted the lifeless bodies of the two men in Yosemite Valley, both without parachutes. Hunt had cleared the pass's base, but collided with the wall after veering diagonally, causing the sound rap heard. Potter was found farther inside the notch. Potter's discovery raised questions about Hunt's influence on him. Neither had a GoPro recorder, but Potter had a damaged smartphone on his head. Investigators reviewed its photos but found no conclusive evidence. The climber's demise was deemed a tragic accident. Potter, an advocate for base jumping's Yosemite legalization, tragically perished pursuing it. His memorable passing was marked by a poignant social media post thanking fellow climbers who shared his base jumping cause in Yosemite. In May, Potter uploaded a photo on Facebook depicting four base jumpers leaping from Half Dome in Yosemite, accompanied by the caption, This is one of my all-time favorite pictures of civil disobedience. I sure miss my friend Seen Leary. He's wearing the red rig in this picture. Regrettably, Seen Leary had also suffered a fatal wingsuit accident in Zion National Park, Utah, back in March 2014. Curiously, Dean Potter had foreseen his own demise several years prior to its occurrence. In a 2014 interview with a lesser-known media outlet, premiering our film, uh, world premiere of When Dogs Fly. Um, it's about Whisper, myself, and my girlfriend Jen in the Swiss Alps, um, alpine climbing and wingsuit flying together. And Whisper flies on my back in the movie. Potter discussed his adventurous pursuits and his deep-seated desire to take to the sky. He was quoted as saying, when I was a young child, my earliest memory was a dream of flying a dream where I soared and also plummeted. As I grew older, I often pondered whether it might have been a premonition of my eventual fatal fall. Tragically, his conjecture would prove tragically accurate. The world of extreme sports mourned the loss of Dean Potter, renowned as a visionary climber and one of the era's most influential athletes. Reflecting on Potter's passing, contemporary climber Tommy Caldwell noted how those who push safety boundaries can feel invincible. He has a great, fierce, open-faced passion for climbing and for the art of the natural world as it is expressed through climbing. He would talk about the heart of the thing, not the difficulty of the thing. That was a really powerful difference. Caldwell remembered Potter as a larger-than-life figure who believed in limitless human potential. Potter's death prompted the climbing community to reassess boundaries and safety in extreme sports. Three days later, Jen Rapp visited Taft Point, where Potter and Hunt had last jumped. A touching heart-shaped rock memorial had been placed at the cliff's edge, offering a view of El Capitan and Yosemite falls against the sloping ridge backdrop. The memorial featured feathers, a beer can, Tibetan prayer flags, and a photo of Potter serving as a poignant tribute. Seated in solitary contemplation upon a rock, Rap was taken by surprise when a raven suddenly materialized. Without hesitation, the bird drew near and started nibbling on a slice of salami right from her hand. It marked an unprecedented encounter for her, the raven's penetrating gaze leaving her momentarily speechless. Finally, she murmured, yeah, it was Dean. If you like this kind of story, click the next video shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.